So welcome to this uh, this session on greater adaptability. So, so with all of the uncertainty in the world, we are looking for leaders, uh, particularly inclusive leaders, who have the ability to make sense of all of this ambiguity and provide some some clear and succinct direction. Right. So, so we're looking for leaders who have greater adaptability. So in this session, we'll talk about what is greater adaptability, what are some of the, um, the market disruptions or disruptors that we currently have to, to navigate, um, what is disequilibrium, and then what are the skills needed to navigate this space as, a, uh, as an inclusive leader, and then why is change so difficult? So uh, again, sense of we'll belonging. have this introduction and you can watch that at your time, but I, I just want to hit the highlights of, of this particular section. And so what is greater adaptability? Well, it refers to the flexible ways of thinking and agile cognitive approaches uh, to change and complexity. So it's a, it's a way of thinking um, in the face of complexity and change. It allows leaders to shift from and adjust their leadership styles and strategies in dealing with uh, crisis situations or solving problems creatively, right? So, so this idea of greater adaptability is that I, I can solve problems creatively, that I can address uh, crises in, in a way that continues to lead us towards our goals. So when we think about um, some of this disequilibrium that we're that we're experiencing, um, I, I like this picture of the, the these rocks because oftentimes there are things that shift and change either in the market in, uh, in in the way that we engage things. And so one of the things that we know that is a constant is change, right? So so change is a constant, and so we're. So what kinds of changes are we experiencing in, in our workplaces? Well, right now we, we have five generations in, in the workforce, right? And that's a huge change. Um, we have uh, technology that is disrupting the way that we, that we do business. Um, many of us are able to do business uh, across the world uh, as, as a part of our kind of nine to five responsibilities. Um, we also recognize that disruptions in, in, in markets, right? And so um, as new products come out, they change the way we, we think about things. Um, there are, um, you know, electric vehicles that are autonomous now that are making deliveries, uh, particularly, I, I know one medical institution in, in Florida where um, on their campus, the car, the automated cars make, um, deliveries and pick up things right uh, on their campus. And so um, that that's certainly a disruptor. Um, and then there's some complexities, right? So, so how do we um, do, you know, social distancing for some period of time and still have social gatherings, right? How do you um, run, you know, stores and churches and synagogues and mosques um, with, with, the complexities of, of trying to wrestle with uh, social distancing. And then the uncertainties of, of markets, right? So we, we recognize that uh, the Dow, uh, Dow Jones Industrial Index can go up and it can go down, or more rightly, it will go up and it will come down, right? So th that adds to some, some uncertainties. Um, particularly as we start to think about education and, and how education is changing, there's certainly some uncertainties there. How um, I do think that it's interesting that uh, when I got my master's degree in, um, uh, in, in education with a specialty in um, uh, curriculum and instruction for online, um, uh, online education, Nobody, people were like, what, what is that degree? I don't understand what that is. Right. Uh, but now it is, um, is a very sought after, uh, career choice, right? So, so I, I appreciate that. And so these uncertainties, we need leaders that can actually drive us to, to think critically. And so how do you, how, how do you get the best out of people? How do you, um, given all of the, the chaos that oftentimes um, 
is around us and how do how do we make sense of that things and those are the things that that inclusive leaders need to um to adapt to so so here are some ways to become greater at adapting to to situations recognize that not one size fits all so that one answer for a situation um it, it, it may be in the past at work, but as we look towards the future and the complexities that we're, we're, we're dealing with, that we need to have more than one way of thinking about how to solve a problem. And so um, where we may have gone with just a vote, consensus models of uh, of decision making may be necessary given whatever task we're, we're after, right? And so recognizing that one size does not fit all. We have five generations in the workplace that technology and um, online and distance learning is changing how we interact, that we're managing multiple cultures um, just in our teams as well as in our organizations. So how do you, how do you manage th that um, that kind of uh, disruption in in your workflow, um, and also how do we also while we're managing that, how do we also make sure that we're being equitable and that we're including people in our our processes? How do we get used to a new normal? Right? How do we get used to a new normal? Um, and many of you can recognize what is. Um, uh, could be a challenge for some people about this map, um, and, and I challenge. Uh, well, well, let's let's just say what, what what what's going on with this map. Some people would say that it's upside down, right? Um, which is interesting because that that's a perspective, right? That's a that's a perspective, and so um, is that is this map wrong? I would say it's not wrong. I would say that it is a perspective or or a choice, right? And so when we think about how we're moving as a leader, many of us um, don't recognize the opportunities that we might have just by looking at something different. Or when people present us with things that are different, how do we, how do we adapt? How do we include that? How do we navigate that? And so we also have to recognize that change in and of itself is difficult. Change is difficult, just the nature of change. And so um, I'd, I'd encourage you to read this um, this uh, Plato's allegory of the cave. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, but I, I, I want you to think about why is it that that change is so difficult. And the cave, simply the synopsis, is that people were um, were raised inside of a cave, chained and watching shadows by firelight and listening to echoes as if the shadows were speaking. And then one day someone gets released out of the cave and they leave the cave and they see the real world and they come back into the cave and say, hey, everyone, this is not reality. Come join me in reality. And I want you to think about or read how they respond to that person who was trying to free them, right? And so when you think about um, how, how and why change is, is so difficult, maybe we can have a bit more um, empathy for folks, but also think strategically about how we help them adapt and deal with a change in, in their environment. And most of the changes that we're trying to adapt to uh, are not things that are in our control, right? They're not in our circle of control. So what does it take to be a um, to be an adaptive leader, right? So first, um, one of our first primary responsibilities is to help re uh, recalibrate emotions about change, right? So change isn't happening because it, it you know, it's it's you like change is after you and it's trying to inflict things on you. However, people can have real re emotional responses to change. It could feel like loss. It could feel like um, the grieving process uh, as they're recognizing how things have changed, right? Um, people get nostalgic and I remember when, and this is how it used to be. And those things are fine and good to, to, to do, but we can't get stuck in those emotional spaces because there's still work to be done. There are goals to be accomplished. Um, and also as a leader, put yourself in the other person's shoes um, and recognize that change can be different. Consider new opportunities in the face of, 
of these shifts and these change. So, so not necessarily see, not necessarily seeing change as a bad thing, but actually as an opportunity to do something new or different or, or unique. Um, and create collaborative plans to address shifts and challenges, right? So put this back on, on your team, put the, the, the things that you can. Um, have them come up with some of the solutions given this new, or at least brainstorm with them how they can look at this this change as an opportunity as opposed to uh, a, a, a problem or a removal or, uh, of something. And then communicate augmentations and adjustments um, a, as needed, right? So one of the things that, that people, you know, it, particularly if there's a leader that people trust and they, um, because the leader has demonstrated themselves to be trustworthy, uh, the, the more you can communicate with folks, the more they're willing to participate with you as these changes come and adjust, right? And so um, there have been lots of stories of organizations that have just been up front and said, you know, we lost so many millions of dollars this year. We're going to have to do some some furloughs. How, as a group, how do we, th what might be some ways that we can can look at these furloughs? And in some, some organizations, people have actually, uh, employees have actually you know, uh, volunteered or gave suggestions on rolling furloughs so that the pain was kind of spread equally throughout their, their organization. And so these are the kinds of opportunities that we can gain if we're looking at being an adaptive leader. When we look at challenges um, and as such, as opposed to looking at them as problems. And we also want to be a proactive leader, right? So, so there's the circle of things that we cannot control, and then there's the circle of things we do control. And so when we operate from where we, the things we can control, then we are being a proactive leader. When we are being responsive to a world that is, is, is inundating us with information or requirements, and we're not acting on those things, we're responding to those things, we're said to be a reactive leader. And, and so what I would suggest is that we, we think about what are the strengths of our group? What are the strengths of the individuals? How do we maximize those in the face of this opportunity? Um, as opposed to the negative aspects of, of looking at change. And so this ends um, this particular part of uh, our, our session. Um, I look forward to seeing you in our next session. This is Andre Cohen.